here's the a, one proof of the fundamental theorem of algebra that I promised uh, as an adjunct to some of the videos I've been doing. Um, and this is going to be a, uh, a modification, not a huge modification, of one of the proofs you can find on the Wikipedia page for the fundamental theorem of algebra. Um, I think it's one of the most straightforward. And it doesn't use any big powerful theorems from complex analysis. So the theorem is that given a non-constant polynomial p over the complex numbers, there's c, the complex numbers, that means it just has coefficients in the complex numbers, then p has a root in the complex numbers. And what I want to do first is I want to look at a special case. Okay. Um, let's let k be a positive integer. And uh, let's let a be in the complex numbers, any complex number. And let's say q is the polynomial q of w, say, is w the k minus a. OK, so that's exactly a special case of the situation. And we're trying to fi find, can we solve that equals 0? In other words, can I find a kth root w of a? If we can't do that, then of course it's hopeless uh, to do general to solve general polynomial equations. Okay, well, if we give ourselves a little bit of knowledge about the complex numbers, then this is this is of course very easy. If a is r e to the i theta, then we just let w equals the ordinary real kth root of the positive of the non-negative real number r times e to the i theta over k and we're good let me um let me make, make that a little bit let me show you a, a little bit of a more roundabout proof of this uh, because this is a fairly powerful assumption and it brings the calculus part into it and um, i want to emphasize how this theorem about the complex numbers it uses a, a, a little bit of topology in an essential way. The fact that that uh, the complex plane basically has no holes in it. Um, but then, and then algebra, but it's a little bit weird to have to go to this, which is, I think, you know, much more deeply involved with calculus. So let me show you a two-step proof um, going to even more special cases that doesn't use quite as much about the e to the i theta. Doesn't use that at all, okay? So uh, first of all, a equals zero, this is trivial. This is, any kth root of zero is zero. So from now on, I'm going to assume that A is not equal to zero. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use, I'm basically going to use this without knowing about E to the i theta. The key is this polar decomposition of a complex number that if I start with some complex number A out here, what I'm going to do is show that I can take this, the kth root of the magnitude, which is the radial information, and the unit complex number that we could convert A into by dividing by its magnitude. So let's see what the special cases are there. So the first one is simply a real number. Okay, and let's just think about, think somewhat deeply about why that's true. Suppose that, um, case one, A is greater than zero. So that just means, it means it's a real number and greater than zero. Okay. Then there is a solution to wk equals a, and of course w is also can be chosen to be greater than zero. Okay, actually, you know what? Let me let me say x to the k equals a, because I usually think about w as being a complex number. Okay, in other words, there's such thing as a kth root, and why is that? Okay, this is really it's actually a fairly deep thing to take the like the cube root of pi or something if you think hard about the number system but the real number system but this is a pretty basic statement um, it's from the inter intermediate value theorem and this is absolutely the most basic kind of topology you can be doing is using the intermediate value theorem on the real numbers we have the function f of x equals x to the k it starts out at zero and the limit as x goes to infinity of f of x is infinity. So no matter what it looks like exactly, depending on what power it is, it's going to start out like that. That means it's going to hit a at some point. Okay. So by the IVT, there exists some x 
such that f of x equals a. And there's the x. Okay. So that's just a use of the IBT to get the fact that there's such a thing as a real kth root. I don't really know it, need to know how to find it or construct it in any particular way. It's just a topological fact. So that's one of the places the topology comes in. Okay. So now, let me uh, just make sure I'm not forgetting anything. I'm not anything, forgetting anything on my little cheat sheet here. Okay. Um, now, let's suppose we look at the special case. A is not a real number anymore. A is in the complex numbers, but the magnitude of A equals 1. Okay, so that's on the unit circle. So here's A. Okay, then I claim that there is a Z also with magnitude 1. Although we don't need to know that, but it's, it's a true fact. With z to the k equals a. So you can take the kth root of anything on the unit circle. Well, I'm not going to be super careful about this, but it's basically IVT again, but it just applied to the circle. Because let's take a look at f of z equals z to the k. Then f of 1 is 1. Okay, so it starts here. And then what happens... As I increase uh, z, as I walk z around the unit circle, what happens is that z to the k, let me just write it out, as z winds, let's say counterclockwise once around the unit circle, so like here's z going around, z to the k also winds counterclockwise. And it, it happens to go k times. But all we need to know is that it goes at least once around the circle. And so z to the k is a point that starts here and winds repeatedly around the unit circle. It's going to hit everything. It's Eventually, it's going to hit a. It has to go through a. And to make that precise would be a little bit of, of work. You, you kind of have to think about a version of the intermediate value theorem applied to a circle. But the, the, what we're depending on is the fact that if I take a path on the circle that winds at least once around the circle, it's going to hit everything on the circle. Topologically, uh, sort of in the, at the level of intuitive topology, pretty darn obvious. Okay, so um, now we can just combine these two guys. Okay, so now given any a, as long as it's not zero, and we've already dealt with that case, and this is any complex a. Okay, so what we do is we find z to the k, so this is what I alluded to before. We don't directly find a root for this guy. What we do is we find a root for a over magnitude of a. That's going to be z. And then find a root of the magnitude. That's the ordinary real number. And then clearly xz to the k is going to be a. And so that's the number we wanted. It's really just the, secretly of course, x is the kth root of r, and z is e to the i theta over k. But we never had to know about the e to the i theta business. Okay, Just emphasizing that it's really about algebra and very basic topology, and nothing fancier. OK, so now. Um, in the next video, it re this really shouldn't take too long. I think it's just one more video. Um, we'll get to the real meat of the proof of um, the fundamental theorem of algebra now that we've done this very, very central warm-up case.